Here is a phone from 1998, the Ericsson A1018S. It has basic functions and no games. Why then did Ericsson add Tetris over two years after its release to a firmware update that was only available in Eastern European countries? In late 1999, Ericsson released the T28, the first Ericsson phone with built-in games, Tetris and Solitaire. Nokia already had the very popular Snake game. Ericsson, being the third largest phone manufacturer at the time, decided to add Tetris to their phones. Throughout the following year, Ericsson included Tetris on many other new models as well. Then in 2001, a couple of things happened. One, Ericsson stopped making phones as they transitioned to Sony Ericsson. The last phone that Ericsson made was the T68M, which was also incidentally the first colour screen phone available worldwide, and yes, it included a colour version of Tetris. Another thing that happened in 2001, before Ericsson transitioned, is they released a firmware update for the much older A1018S. The firmware was only available in Eastern Europe, and it mysteriously contained Tetris, tucked away in the Tools menu. The firmware itself ended up being so popular that it spread around on internet forums and owners of A1018S's began flashing it directly into their own phones. So let's have a quick look at this phone. Have a look through the menus. They're all pretty standard, nothing much there. And that's it, so there's no Tools menu. If the firmware upgrade is successful, we should get a Tools menu. To flash this phone, I'm going to use my Windows 98 laptop. A lot of the third-party software that was written back in the day was made for Windows 98 and does struggle a lot to run on Windows XP, so this is a good option. I'm also going to need a cable to connect up the phone. First up, I have here an original Ericsson data cable, which one end plugs directly into the phone, and the other end has an RS-232 serial port on it. And this cable contains a voltage level converter and that's because a computer's RS-232 port uses 12 volt signals whereas the serial port on the bottom of this phone uses TTL serial or transistor transistor logic which in this case is 5 volt signals. Connecting these different voltage signals together directly won't only not work but can cause damage now the main problem I have here is this computer has no serial port. So instead I'll be using a USB to TTL serial adapter. These adapters are often used for interfacing to Arduino or other microcontrollers. They can be used to interface to any device which has TTL serial such as the Kobo Mini eBook Reader which has an internal TTL serial port on the circuit board possibly used for development or debugging. Many devices contain hidden serial interfaces which can be really useful for modding or hacking them. So using this adapter, which is already at 5 volts, makes the voltage level converter in this cable redundant because there's no need to convert from 12 and back again. Also to flash this Ericsson, I'm going to need to connect pin 7 to at least 5 volts to activate, which this data cable does not do. Instead of doing all the modifications necessary to this cable, I have here a connector which fits directly into the bottom of the phone. And so I'm going to use that to build my own cable. Okay, I've got the pin out for the bottom of the phone here, so I should be able to build a service cable using these pinouts. Let's have a look at the descriptions here. And there's pin 7, which when we give it 5 volts should put the phone into test mode and if we give it 12 volts it should enable flash as well though most service cable diagrams that I've seen simply connect pin 8 which is 3.3 volts out so we'll try that and see if that works and pin 9 is data out and it says debug messages will appear here so that'll be useful for testing and we've got pin 10 and that's ground we'll need that one as well and finally pin 11 for data in so it even gives us a description here for testing. Switch the phone off, 5 volts onto pin 7, and then when we switch back on, 
it should be outputting data on the TTL serial. So let's build that and give it a go. Alright, let's get this connector open. There we go. So that's pin 12 here and pin 11 here. 10, 9, 8, 7. So I'm going to start with 11. Let's get some solder onto these pins. Okay, first of all, pin 11. I'm going to go with yellow. That's the data in pin. Next is ground. Pin 9 is transmit. Green. Next we have 3.3 volt out. I'm going to go with brown. Now I'm using DuPont connectors here. So for the test pin, I'm going to go with a male DuPont so I can plug it into the 3.3 volt output. Okay, we're all connected up. And we'll be able to connect the test pin in that fashion there. And then we've got three to go to the USB to serial adapter. Let's see what happens. First we need to connect ground, which was blue. Now receive means we need to go transmit from the phone to receive. So that's green. And yellow is receive from the phone, so transmit. Okay that should be the service cable that we need okay I've got everything set up the USB to serial adapter cable is ready the phone is all ready and I'll just bring this up close I've got the driver installed for the adapter and it's got COM3 and I also have a terminal program here to display everything coming through the serial port and I've got that set to COM3 on the board rate for the debug mode so it's just a matter of powering up the phone and there it goes so you can see the debug messages scrolling through so that means that the cable works and it's putting the phone into service mode so we can now switch to the process of flashing the firmware so we'll bring up some flash tools now and need to find one that works. There's various different third-party flash tools here. Okay, I found some software that does seem to connect to the phone. It's on COM3. If I download the PROM and hit start and then power on the phone. A1018 detected. Waiting for handshake. Sending boot. And downloading PROM. So it's making a backup of the EEPROM here, which uh, is not a bad idea. Okay, I'm going to try flashing the phone now. Here we go. Open, flash files, Tetris, flash phone. Got some other options here. Don't need any of those other options. Start. Power on the phone. It's detected. raising flash well it's most likely on its way if it says that it's erasing the flash here wrong software version for this phone try another flash image Ooh dear so I've noticed along with this flashing error that the checksum is saying error with this particular version of the flash. All right, let's power cycle the phone and see what happens. Right, well, this phone is no longer powering up, so I'm going to have to do some investigating and find out what's going on. There's a lot of different software available for flashing these phones, so I'm just going through and trying a lot of it to see what they do. And to help me, I actually have a second A1018S. And this can be useful for testing software on two different hardware revisions, see if there's any differences. They're slightly different, 
in that this one was made in the year 2000 week 05 and this one was made in the year 2000 week 16 this is revision 3b this is revision 2a and this one seems to be locked to Vodafone which uh, easy to take care of that problem so I'm going to start using this one instead to try some of this software I've been able to fix the checksum on the Tetris flash I have here a flash file conversion program which you can load a flash file in and then save it as various different flash file formats and I've saved it as a different flash file format so now the checksum is good okay the checksum looks fine uh, let's see what happens this time flash and go okay the flashing has been successful so let's have a look at the phone alright we've got the Ericsson logo looking pretty good okay menu system yep there's tools okay and yes we have Tetris alright I now have Tetris on my A1018S so I guess it's time for a game see how it plays so if we start the game we've got levels all the way up to 10 uh, just quickly start on level 1 and as you can see Tetris plays on its side so I'll have a game and so level 1 is a bit slow okay I've had a few games on this and level 9 is pretty good it's nice and fast the keys are really rubbery which is not very responsive it does make it a little bit difficult to play with this keyboard so now we come to the mystery of why Ericsson decided to put Tetris into this phone towards the end of its life perhaps they saw that there was some space in the flash memory and that there was something they could do with it and they had the license for Tetris for other models so why not include it in this phone as well so I think they did this just for the challenge though why it was only included in one specific firmware version and only in Eastern Europe well one thing's for sure is this firmware did become very popular and it did spread all around the world something I found as I was going through all the software and flash files is I found something called Coke Flash it turns out Ericsson and Coca-Cola made a special promotional version of the A1018S if you collected Coke labels and sent Coke some money they'd send you a phone it seems like the only difference with this promotional version of the phone is that it starts up with the Coca-Cola logo instead of the Ericsson logo now I have tried to flash the phone however I wasn't able to get it working I tried everything that got this working for Tetris and more but I just wasn't able to get it to work so while I was trying all that I found a different program called Ericsson Logo Uploader or Logo Manager by Lead and I should be able to use this to patch the firmware in the phone to put my own logo onto the phone so I think that's how this phone will end up alongside the Ericsson Tetris phone Nothing beyond my control.